morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's grab hands and be family. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's get in that circle. Let's get in that circle.
Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from all of my sin. For I know my transgressions. Say my transgression. And my sin. Say my sin. Is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you're proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the innermost place. Cleanse me. Say cleanse me. Cleanse. Would you say it again, please? Cleanse, cleanse me. Yes. Wash me. Would you say the word wash me? Wash me. And I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Allow all my iniquity. This is the verse you know. Verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew the right spirit, the steadfast spirit within me. Every day we should lift our church in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. In the name that's above all names. Christ, our Lord. And God, as we come before you today, Lord God, we just want to lift my brothers and my sisters up to you. Father, we thank you for another day we come to serve you, to worship you, to honor you in all that we say and all that we do. But God, as we start, Father, we got to ask forgiveness. Forgive us, each one of us, of our sins. Forgive each one of us, Father, for holding back things against one another. Forgive us, Father, Father, for not looking forward, but looking behind. Because, God, you want us to keep our heads lifted up to look to you. Because, God, we know it's the only place to go is toward you. So as we come before you today, Father, as we ask, Lord, in the name of your Son, your word says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And we rejoice today. Thank you, Father, for the hands that we're holding. Father God, we pray for the person to our left and to our right. God, we ask in Jesus' name, you know what the needs are in each person, the hands we're holding. And we ask in Jesus' name, you will see about them. You know the needs, Father. Yes, You know what they need. They're in prayer of We ask now that you help them. Pour out your blessing of Father upon each person under the sound of my voice. Let your Holy Spirit just take control of each one. Well, it is. Teach us, us. God, we look to you for all answers. And we say with a rousing roar, hallelujah! 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 And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's sing together. Christ the Lord. Christ.
It's Joseph in front of you. Say good morning, Joseph. It's Joseph. He's the first time. Anybody else joining us for the first time? That's what I heard. <laughs> He's like a brother to me. I know, that's family love, man. Amen. Joseph wants to stand up and tell us the name. Who is a nice person to invite? Let's clap our hands for our brother. Thank you. My name is Joseph. I'm and my cousin Sandy. He's like a brother to me. He told me to come down. Isn't that fabulous? Let's give Joseph a great big hand. Sandy, thank you for inviting Joseph to church, man. You're welcome. That's wonderful. Sandy said, I'm going to have some fruit on my tree. Amen. <laughs> I don't want to have a barren tree. I want to be able to say I have somebody to come closer with the Lord. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Huh? Wouldn't that be nice? I think that's a good, a good thing to uh, aspire to. Good morning, Alice Walker Dove. I want you all to know that uh, during this clergy appreciation month, um, Dr. Alice Walker Dove, uh, loved her pastor enough to send me a, an interview. Uh, Ari Shapiro on NPR was a fine journalist. Interviewed, uh, interviewed the, uh, the woman who serves as the, uh, uh, what's the term I'm looking rabbi. for? Rabbi, thank you. The rabbi for Ikar which is a very progressive uh, Jewish temple here in Southern California. And an imam from uh, Kansas. And it was a wonderful treatment. Uh, two clergy persons, one Muslim and one Jewish, about how they're going to deal with the war. And since it's on everybody's mind, I want to say that the ugliness is obvious. Can you say amen? amen? The atrocities are obvious. Many times there are things going on that you haven't prepared yourself. You're not sure. You don't know. You just know what's obvious. But what I want to say to somebody here today is there was a woman, the rabbi, whose name is me right now. She said this. She said, a loose translation is, is that I'm, I'm against horrific acts. I'm not quoting her properly. I'm against, that's what she said. She said, I'm against people who feel like violence is the solution. You know what she said? I just want you to wrestle with that. And I want to say, with my feet squarely on the ground, that violence is not the solution. Can you say amen? No matter how you feel against somebody else, violence is not the solution. Someone said an eye for an eye and a two for a two. And my pastor used to say, yeah, but that leaves everybody blind and snaggle to. <laughs> That's not a good look. <laughs> Can we pray right now? I'm sure Reverend touched on it, but I was so hyped up. God have mercy on the land. God have mercy on the people. God have mercy on those who are collateral damage. God have mercy on leaders who make awful decisions. God have mercy. God rise up within us that we might be advocates for peace, advocates for justice. Thank you for reminding us that you happen to have a disproportionate concern and seen the marginalized form. For such a game So have mercy on In Jesus' name. Savior. We don't have an organ today, we don't have 
Jesus. It would be wrong in my mind if you had a parent that had the whole world in her hands and his hands and you didn't ask that parent who loves you to help you along the way. Flip it for a minute, get yourself off, and get your mind off yourself for a minute, and check this out. If you've ever been responsible for somebody, and you find out that they're in the storm, and they didn't tell you about it, and you had the resource to help, how does that make you feel? Terrible. He's like, baby, I would have helped you. But you never came to me. So today, I need you to know that as you are sitting here now, you have the capacity and you have the access you have the capacity to use your mind and your words to say, God, come see about it. 
And then you have a blessed assurance. Yeah, that down through the years, God's been there for you. Am I right about it? Hasn't he been good? Hasn't God opened a door that was closed in your face? Hasn't God healed your body? Hasn't God soothed your soul? Hasn't God showed you that nothing is too hard for God? Can you say amen? amen. Brought you out. Hallelujah. your hand if God's been good to you. That's so just about everybody. Anybody got some sense raise their hands. Amen. Got a full day today. But I, I just, man, I just Reverend David Smile we're back there praying. And he's believing God for you. Amen. said he had a testimony. I want to hear two or three today in one, two minutes or so what the Lord has done. I don't need you to tell it all. Amen. But if you feel like you want to glorify God, then take a couple of minutes. Come, son. I don't mean to call you son like that, but come, sir. Please, Joseph, come. Let's clap our hands for our brother. October 21st, you see, we, we, you don't see it, but just waking up is a blessing, so don't look for nothing else. Yeah. Don't look for nothing up. Just waking up is a blessing. Y'all be looking for materialistic stuff, but no, God is there all the time. He knows what you think before you even think it, so don't think nothing negative, because it's going to come back on you. I used to say to my kids, karma's not real, she is. I don't know if it's she or he, but it's real. <laughs> I was sitting in a chair, it wasn't windy or none of that, I just fell over. I'm like, what is going on? And somebody else knows, that's karma. You see, my kids, that because I couldn't walk, talk, or none of that. I'm talking to you, I'm bringing it to you because God is there. People don't think that he's there, he is. He sees every move you make, every breath you take, he knows what you're doing. And see, it took me a while because I'm the only child and stuff like that. And my mom was like, I was like, when I was younger, can I have a brother or sister? She was like, no, you got cousins. My first cousin right there, that's my brother. That's all I said. I've been seeing this a lot of I wasn't a stingy kid. I, you know, I didn't have nobody to play with. When it came over, I was happy. I don't have a tail, but it was wagging, you know? It, it, <laughs> but I, I know that I'm blessed. Come on, let's give our brother Joseph a hand. Thank you, thank you. 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 Listen, sometimes there's more going on than you know. Hallelujah. 
someone else has a testimony for a couple of minutes to share, you need to give glory to God. Come on down, Sister McGee. Let's see you with your wonderful self. Let's clap our hands for our sister.
but they both are dealing with something internally. And I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying for both of them. So I'm asking each of you to pray for them. Pray for sure. Pray for, pray for Kyle. Mikaela doesn't have any children. And I'm not sure if she can even have children. I'm not sure if it's even part of her. But I asked her the other day, do you want to have children now? She's 38 years old. She said, Daddy, I think, I don't think I'm going to have it. And she was so sad looking. Sisters, you know, they have children and cousins who have children and cousins who have twins and my, my brother's sons just had twins and, and she can't have any. Uh, she God have a blessed her before. And I asked her, do you still want to have a child? She said, I don't know if I do. Pray for her. I don't know if her stomach issues is because of that, but she's had them so, so, so long. Pray for her. Pray for Kai. And now it seems like Kai is dark in these same little stomach problems. So. I love my family. You are my family. I know you know you can call on me anytime you need. I want to get some phone numbers straight just in case he can back and I give him another. Please, please call me. Because I would love to pray for you. Because I believe the Holy Spirit can do it. The impossible. And I'm going to still believe. God bless you for family. Family is so important. I thank God for you. And I thank God for blessing me with you. God bless you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, great God today, we lift up Hi. We lift up Mikaela, Mikaela. We know that you made both of their bodies. And we know that you have plans for both of these women's lives. You said, God, if we would align ourselves in you, you'd give us the desires of our heart. And sometimes, God, our faith is so strong that we're able to just take what's in the printed word and, speak, and stand on it. And sometimes, God, our faith falters. us. And sometimes, God, we find ourselves saying, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So God, work on them even as you work on your servant, Reverend Davis. Even, God, as you work on us. Sometimes we're over in the full faith camp. Sometimes we're over in the full worry camp. Hey! And sometimes we're saying, God, anyway, bless me. I'll be satisfied. Work on this, God. Work on this, God. And thank you for being so patient. As we navigate. This journey called life. Amen. We're going to sing a little song today. But I ask just going to cue it up as some of you know it. And then I'm going to come share my little message. Good morning, sister in the back. Help you with your name, and we'll get it one day. God bless you.
Good morning, you love birds in the back. I know their names. They just like to hold it down because that, don't fool yourself, that's the security. So he'll, 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 he'll jack you if you come in there acting funny style. That's the deacon back there. His gratefulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you know it. Lyrics say, come on, let's sing this song. And Ash got the track. And we're going to sing together. Some of you know it today. It's a number that will bless you. I want you to turn, tune up your vocalizer. Like, I am grateful for the things.
thinking about all of the things that we do here at church, we thank God for all the glories, great and small. Amen. Let the church say praise the Lord.
Bibles, please, to the book of Genesis. I want to take a moment to uh, thank Brother Shion. Brother Shion came up in the prayer call this morning, not in the prayer call, but in the prayer time. And Reverend Davis called his name, and I concur how much of a blessing he has meant to our family. And I want you to stand, and I want you all to clap for him because it's time to appreciate our brother. Come on, get up. Genesis chapter 4. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. And she said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth 
to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, say the word flocks. And Cain worked the soil, say the word soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions, say fat portions. <laughs> From some of the firstborn, say firstborn. But Abel brought fat portion from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, God did not look with what? Favor. Say the word favor. Thank you. So Cain was very angry. And his face was downcast. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? Reading from the New King James today. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. And it desires to have you. But you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were there in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. The Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother, say your brother. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. That's enough. I want to share my message today and simply call it anger is not the answer. Yes. Say it with me, please. Anger, anger is not the answer. Not the answer. I've oftentimes said to you all that uh, many times when I'm on an airplane, people ask me what I'm what I do. And if I feel like talking, I'll tell them I'm a preacher. If I don't feel like talking, I'll just say, um, I don't misrepresent the truth, but I don't tell all of it. But many times people want to know, where do your sermons come from? From where do they come? And oftentimes I'll tell them. Many times I'll get in my prayer closet and whatever God is dealing with me about, I go study that and then get on Sunday and preach to myself. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So if I got sin in my life and I'm having trouble dealing with it, I get in there, the Lord puts his finger on me, says, This is a problem, and then I come preach to you all what's going on with me. Other way that the sermons come, sisters and brothers, is I read what's going on in the newspaper, I listen to the news. Other times I find that what's going on on the calendar. So at Easter time of resurrection, obviously that's on everybody's mind, I'm talking about that. So this Sunday, say this Sunday. this Sunday. It's supposed to be Clergy Appreciation Sunday. Clergy Appreciation Sunday is now alongside Breast Cancer, October Birthdays, and in this particular case, what's happening in the Middle East. The war that's going on. And though I wanted to spend time on something else, I wanted to be mindful of something that I learned from that wonderful message that Alice sent me. Is that when people come to their centers of worship after war has raged, they want to find some way to process their feelings regarding the atrocities about which they learned. Simply stated, people of faith want to know, what am I supposed to do with this 
Because my heart is broken and my mind is confused. And sometimes, can you say the word sometimes? You just have to have a sacred space to sit with one another and process the feelings. And sometimes, when you say the word sometimes, God gives the preacher, the teacher some words to share that hopefully will be a blessing. So here we are today, and I want to be celebrating Lura and Ashley and Stephanie and Cheyenne and Reverend Davis and the work that the Lord allows me to do. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to do that. And I want to stand flat-footed and say it is right to give esteem to those who serve me in the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to miss my opportunity to say it. I find it interesting that oftentimes... Uh, pastors are somewhere wondering what, what's going on. Where is the love? It might sound a little self-serving and I promised that I wasn't going to do that today. But I need you to know that when you think about what Reverend Davis does, I'm just going to talk from the clergy's perspective for a moment because we're going to respect the day. Understand this, that your pastor, your minister is on call 24-7. Your pastor, your minister, has to be a problem solver. Your pastor, your minister, has got to be a crisis manager. Your pastor, your minister, has got to raise money without people talking about him. They're going to talk about him anyway. Your pastor, your minister, has got to go to the same events you do. You do, but always be up under the fishbowl of scrutiny. Your pastor, your minister's children are looked at and they're supposed to be models of perfection. Your pastor, your minister's spouse is looked upon and they're supposed to be a model of perfection. So maybe that's why the Bible says that you ought to give double honor to those that serve you in the teaching. Let the church say amen. Now you can wrestle with that and say, I don't think he or she deserves that. And that might be the sentiment of some. But maybe you think about it a little more deeply and ask yourself, what would I do if when I was in trouble and I needed my pastor to come and she didn't come or he didn't come. What would I do in those seasons of life when I was struggling, even though I'm gifted and smart, but I needed God's servant to be there. What would it do? So I think it's right, say it's right, it's right, that God's people would give proper honor to God's servants. But what I want to talk about today is far away from Clergy Appreciation Month. I want to talk about this issue of anger. Would you say the word anger? Anger. anger. Because unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, what we're seeing in the Middle East, what we're seeing in Gaza, what we're seeing in Palestine, what we're seeing in Israel, if you follow it closely, you consider words like rape, when you consider words like occupation, when you consider words like slaughter, when you consider words like human animals, there's some anger in that thing. Amen. Amen. And anger has made folk in that conflict behave in ways that are unseemly. But let's not be so quick to just point the finger at somebody else. Because most of us in here know what it's like to feel angry. Can you say amen? amen. It's true. It's true. It's true. And so this week, I wanted to talk about it 
Because in the Bible today is a story of two brothers. Can you say the word brothers? brothers. What are their names, family? Hey. What do we learn about these fellows? Abel kept the flocks and Cain worked the soil. And the text says that both of them, say both of them, both. were bringing an offering. Say the word offering. The text says that the one who kept the flocks, Abel, bought the fattest, the fullest, and the finest. As his offering, say the word offering, offering. to the Lord. Uh huh. Cain, on the other hand, went to the ground and grabbed some of the least and the leftovers and brought that as his offering, say the word offering. And I could preach a stewardship message right here and say, don't leave, don't give God your leftovers. Amen. That's the way they used to do the pastor back in the day. You sit on your furniture and when you get all wild and raggedy, then you take it to the pastor house. It's tight, but it's right. It's ugly, but it's true. But in the text today, God commends one and is not pleased with the other. And I want to stop here today, and this has something to do with uh, clergy appreciation. And I want to tell you that I have found, this is me personally, I have found that God blesses when you're generous. Amen. Amen. Stingy folk, that's not good. Generosity is a good quality. And to the extent that you can go around and looking for ways to be good to others, it'll bless you. Amen. Amen. Today I put my arm, I'm just talking today. I put my arms around Trudy Williams. And she's not a woman that likes a lot of attention. But Trudy Woman is a woman with a generous heart. Trudy Williams is a woman with a generous heart. Every time I see her, she's being nice to somebody. Amen. Amen. And I put my arms around her and I said, thank you, Trudy, because wherever I see you in the public square in your church, I see you being kind. Generosity is good. Amen. Amen. Generosity of heart. Back to the text. The Bible says that there's a problem. God commends one brother, looks with favor on one, and the other one, unfortunately, not so much. The text says that there's something that happened. So Cain was very angry. Say very angry. Very angry. Say it again, please. Very angry. Cain very angry. Why is he angry? What I found, sisters and brothers, is that when anger shows up, it is an emotion that is generally easy to see. But anger is at the top of the iceberg, if you please, and below the waterline are things like envy and embarrassment and hurt and stress and guilt and shame and jealousy. And so what happens is, in this particular case, perhaps the one who is not getting favor from God Cain is feeling envy. Cain maybe is feeling shame. Cain is feeling maybe disappointment. Here's the word. Cain is maybe feeling contempt. Say the word contempt. Yeah. Let me tell you how you can tell when a marriage is getting ready to fall apart. You see two people looking at each other and they got a look of contempt on their face. They're going to be in a divorce court soon. Amen. It's one thing to be disappointed. It's one thing to be upset. But when you see a contemptuous look on the face of somebody, you know trouble is brewing. So today, we see that Cain is angry with Abel because of envy. Say the word envy. Because of guilt. Say the word guilt. I don't want to speak today for a few minutes around the subject. Anger is not the answer. When you get angry, brothers and sisters, pause and ask yourself this question. Why am I so angry? Say it with me. Why am I so angry? Say it again. Why am I so angry? Many times there's fear 
anger that leads to anger. So somebody says something to you and you're afraid that what they're saying is about you is right and that it's going to get out. And so instead of having a conversation, we pop off and jump off and say, Hey, don't start none. Ain't going to be none. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all a funny story. I remember when I was a boy. You know when you go to restaurants and, and when your kids are with you and they're little, they give you like some colors, some Crayons and a little color and piece of paper. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So one day I was out with my little kids, and, uh, and, and, and one of them, I can't remember which one, uh, they, they, they drew this picture. They said, Daddy, I'm going to draw a picture of you. And let me back up and get the story straight. I have a little bit of a problem with patience. Can y'all tell? <laughs> uh, and I tell you, if I go to the restaurant and sit there long enough and nobody comes, I'm getting up and go and find somebody. I guess I walk with a certain purpose, you know, and maybe it looks like I might be angry. Say the word angry. And so my kids have sent it along enough, and so my daughter was drawing a picture of me, and they drew the picture, and I said, oh, great, thank you, let me see it. And I said, what's that line right here? <laughs> That's that line when I get angry. And my kids saw it. They saw anger on their father. Yeah. And they drew it and it hurt my heart. It's one of the reasons why I want to have this message today. Is to say, yes, there are other emotions involved. But here's the thing we don't want to create a culture where anger feels like the answer. Can you say amen? Yeah. So I'm asking you to check yourself. Because if you live in a community, if your household tolerates anger, outbursts, and the like, it can become normative. So instead of us sitting down at the table of decency and compromise and such, we jump off on one another and cuss one another out and fight and all that kind of stuff. Even in Christian homes. Anger is not the answer. Say it with me. Say it again. So that wasn't going to be long. I just want to say this to you. That anger, many times, is other emotions blowing up in opinion. Number two is anger is not the answer because we don't want to model that behavior in front of our younger people. But here's the third thing and the last thing. Anger doesn't have the last word. Can you say amen? Amen. Anger doesn't have the last word. So Cain killed Abel. You all know the story. And God's not pleased with it. And God says, you're under a curse. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment, say the word punishment, punishment. is more than I can bear. Today you're driving me from the land and I'll be hidden from your presence. I'll be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so. So this is what I want to believe. I want us to believe that anger doesn't get the last word. Can you say amen? amen? Why, Pastor? Because the man with the line on the front, the man who has been angry and had anger of outbursts, and the person that you looked at in the mirror today is a recipient of God's grace. Amen. amen. And God's grace it is amazing. Yes, it is. So we have angry folk killing one another and raping and pillaging and doing all manner of atrocities. But somewhere down on the inside, I believe that the Prince of Peace ethic and behaviors is going to show up. And in due season, Somehow, can you say the word somehow? Hearts will change. 
Some hearts are going to change. Some will see things differently. And everyone that's listening to me right now that has popped off on somebody, cut somebody out, put your hands on somebody, I've done some of all of that, and I'm not proud of it. But what blesses me this Sunday and every Sunday, and the reason why I say grateful, 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 yeah. grateful yeah. is because he looked yeah. beyond yeah. all of my faults, yeah. so Where Jesus died. He died for my anger and your anger. Let's go out and be agents of love and peace and reconciliation. And let's do so with a grateful heart. Amen. Let's clap our hands for the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Stand all over the church. Good message. Good message. Praise the Lord. Good message. Thank you. Amen. You know, when a preacher talk like that and get all in your Kool-Aid, you got to know that the only reason that I can is because I've been where you've been. Amen. Just right. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to help you. Yeah. Amen. Because I know what it's like to be angry. You do something that when it's over, you say, man, why did I do that? Yeah. Why did I let what he said about me cause me to lose my cool? Why, why did I let what she didn't do cause me to lose my You understand? Yeah. Can we just be honest today? Good yeah. message. Uh, this week I went to a thing called Ceasefire, now on the board there. And, and, and what we're trying to do is to stop community violence where people are killing one another because that's the way they grew up. And I found out that when you go to the penitentiary, you, you can't be walking around there smiling and saying, hey, I'm James. You got to be hard. Keep your head on the swivel. That's exactly right. Keep your head on the swivel so you don't get a knife in your back. And so then what happens when we get out? Get out from that and you keep that up. But what does change hearts? Jesus. He'll take a gangster. He'll take a murderer, they're going to end that us. He'll take somebody that'll cuss you out and jump on you and make them somebody that can make your grandmother and your grandfather proud. It's the same God did that we've come to honor today. The same God did that'll change you, shift it, fix you up, give you some new inclinations. Doors of the church are open today. If you're here and you got a whole lot of hell in you, and you can't get it out by yourself, try give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus with hope in nothing. Are you here today? Come on down. Give the Lord your heart.
Church, say amen. Amen. Reverend Davis, what's happening today? Joseph is here. He said he's in a special place. Yes, I am. He said he just feels God's spirit inside of him. He did 360 with me. I'm walking, talking. I couldn't talk of none of that. I'm talking. Good. Amen. I'm letting you know that he's here. He's a healing God. Yes, he is. All right, church. Oh, well, praise God. Yeah, that. I'm becoming back. I'm bringing my cousin, my other cousin, my lady cousin. We come, we coming. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Joe. Okay. Shut your hands, Joseph's way, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our, uh, our, our, our brother that knows you and wants to be public with his love. Yes. Bless us and bless him in Jesus. Amen. 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 My brother, I don't know how I've forgotten your name. Just walk in. Stand up, tell me your name again, good brother. Please in the back. With the hood. Come on, man. What up? How you feeling?
that are struggling with their finances. We trust you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to clap our hands now for our sister Jean Wilson. Remember our 
our brother Bill West, who always looks good, but sometimes because of some health challenges, is not feeling 100%. But remember how I talked about don't forget the bridges that brought you over. I want to say I love you, brother. I'm glad that you're here. Hope you feel it. Let's all stand. Pastor, can we go? Yes. I just want to say how much we love you and appreciate you today on behalf of all of us here in the church. And that all of us are grateful that we are grateful to the Lord. We're grateful that the Lord sends us a shepherd that keeps us in mind for all the things that are happening in the world. And uh, um, that's part of Flirty Appreciation. And we appreciate you for making sure that we know that we are the church and that we're called to pray for both people in the church and people outside of the church. And that the church is us. As we leave this, leave this building, we go out and we take the church with us. And that's because of you and, the, and what you uh, instill in us with the word and what you instill in us with your vibrancy. Amen. And we also appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's pray. God, we get ready to eat and to enjoy one another. And I really feel, God, that you were especially here today. Because there's always someone that maybe feels like we slip through the cracks. For that one that says, I wasn't seen, I wasn't heard, I didn't feel loved. Let these words and your presence rest on somebody and people. Even now. <coughs> Cancel the ugliness of the enemy's words. It says that we're ugly and that we're less than And that we're always going to be making a mess. And cancel that with what your word says about us. And we're more than conquerors. Yes. Through him that be you that loves us. Hallelujah. Bless our time together and thank you God. We're going to not have music today. We're going to ask those of you that are in this area here to walk through those doors and go take a seat. And then we're going to have a wonderful party. Thank you so much.